um, uh, because this is a story that goes back generations. There's these fictions told at the top of the chain about what conditions are like at the bottom. And truth seekers have to go find that truth and enlighten civilization so that people, people get agitated about it and want to do something about it. So there's no clean cobalt. Let's just make that totally abundantly clear. Uh, and anyone that claims otherwise uh, is either peddling in falsehoods or is recklessly ignorant of the truth. Are there any industrialized cobalt mines that use machinery and don't use slavery and don't use child labor and don't use these people that live in unimaginable poverty? I've never seen one. And I've been to almost all the major industrial cobalt mines. Here's why I say that. Number one, they all or almost all will have scenes like that on them. Thousands of individuals clanking away for a dollar or two a day. Okay? They don't have uh, safety equipment. All that stuff, that cobalt's toxic, toxic to breathe. And they're breathing it in all day. No masks. No masks. No filtration No systems. gloves. No Half those guys are in flip-flops, all right? So um, uh, almost all the industrial mines will have scenes like that. So that's number one. Uh, they'll say there are no artisanal miners there, no children there. And if you, like, zoom in, you'll see that amongst that sea of humanity, there are thousands of kids, teenage boys in this case, because that requires a certain amount of force to, to, to clank away in that pit. Um, number two. There are hundreds of other artisanal mining sites scattered in the mining provinces outside of industrial mines. There are artisanal miners in the industrial mines, and then just on the other side of the fence, there'll be a sea of humanity digging there as well, because it's not like at the fence, the ore body stops. There's copper, cobalt, other things outside as well. So there'll be hundreds of sites where there are hundreds of thousands of people across the mining provinces digging. Um, all that production is sold right back to the industrial mining companies. So it enters their supply chain as well. And then so they take what they extract with industrial equipment, artisanal miners inside the mine, artisanal miners including children outside the mine. It all gets dumped together into the same batch of acids to process and then flows up the chain. And again, no one can reasonably claim that their cobalt, even if they say, that industrial mine, totally clean. Don't believe what Siddhartha is saying. That's a, that's a made-up fake video. They can't demonstrate reliably that all the other cobalt being dug up by kids in thousands of sites across the mining provinces isn't also flowing into their supply chain. Is there another source of cobalt in the world that's ethically supplied? So um, last year, so uh, 2021 is the last year there's data, about 72%, almost three-fourths of the world's supply of cobalt came out of a small patch of the Congo. And then there's like 3% Russia, 3% Australia, 3% Morocco. You know, there's everyone else is 3%. Um, and I don't know what the conditions are there. I imagine in Australia, mining follows standards of dignity and decency and labor and sustainability and so on. Um, uh, but there's not enough cobalt outside of the Congo to meet demand. And demand projections are uh, four, five, six hundred percent increase in cobalt demand in the next decade or two, primarily being driven by adoption of electric vehicles. Each battery pack in an EV requires up to 10 kilograms of refined cobalt. That's a thousand times what's required for a smartphone. So huge demand uh, as the world transitions from uh, internal combustion engines to uh, electric vehicles, which is a net good thing, except for the people in the Congo. Uh, so there's not enough other cobalt out there. Even if all the non-Congo cobalt was perfectly sourced, there's not enough other cobalt out there to meet demand. These companies that we talked about that use all this stuff, whether it's electric vehicle companies or cell phone manufacturers, obviously they're aware of this. Yes, no question. They have to be. Have they made any attempts to mitigate this in any way? 
The truth, Joe, is no, not sufficient efforts. Most of what is done is PR statements, marketing. Um, all these companies will say, we have zero tolerance policies on child labor. We ensure standards of dignity and human rights for every member of our supply chain, down to the mining level. They'll all say this, down to the mining level. Um, and they say it. Uh, and they may throw some money at the odd NGO or uh, coalition or alliance that's meant to be working on these things. Nothing's actually happening on the ground. Uh, and, and that's what my book will demonstrate, you know, as, as I take the reader on the journey from place to place, mind to mind. Um, there's this fiction that exists outside of the Congo of what companies are doing and what the conditions are like. And then there's the reality. Um, underneath the, those layers of obfuscation, there's the reality. There's the truth on the ground. Um, and not one company, not one business alliance, not one uh, entity up the chain is doing remotely enough to ensure that the, the dignity and human rights uh, of the people of the Congo, not to mention the environment, because although mining companies are, are just polluting and clear-cutting forests to build and expand mines, they're not doing nearly enough to respect the people and earth of the Congo um, while we outside enjoy our, you know, renewable, gadget-driven lifestyles. When you first started researching this book and when you first were aware of this issue, what was the difference between your initial perception versus what you found? So going in, um, I was expecting to see some child labor, um, uh, poor working conditions, um, uh, and, and probably some poor environmental uh, practices. And that first trip hit me like a thunderclap. And I've seen a lot, okay? I mean, I've done research in more than 50 countries in the grit and the grime and the misery and the sub, the underbelly of humanity. And it hit me like a thunderclap because the scale was beyond anything I would have imagined. There are hundreds of thousands of people, tens of thousands of children, caked in toxic grime and filth, digging this uh, vital mineral out of the ground in medieval conditions. It's like going back in time. 